Could Alex Mason secretly still be alive to be revealed in Black Ops 6's campaign as a shocking twist? As well as it seems like we're going to be fighting zombies in this campaign, and maybe zombies is even going to be a big part of Black Ops 6's campaign, which I've actually been theorizing quite a bit on the channel, so if this does end up becoming true, I really wonder to what extent they actually pull it off. And we also have some other news topics to talk about. First of all, I want to say for those wondering why content has slowed down on the channel, obviously there's not really been much Black Ops 6 news the past couple weeks because they kind of busted their load all at once. However, marketing is picking back up again, speed running until the two weeks until launch. And I've also been very busy in putting together a massive, probably eight hour long, entire Call of Duty Zombies storyline video in time for Black Ops 6, so that's of course been taking priority right now. Anyways, let's get into everything I want to discuss. So before I get into the Black Ops 6 news, I kind of have a bit of a tangent to talk about Call of Duty Mobile news, because I posted the trailer that came out the other day, because there's a brand new Battle Royale map coming to the game, called Cry or Cray, I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, but I'm sure it's extremely recognizable to you because yes, it seems to be remnants and resemble the cancelled Ural Mountains map that we were supposed to get inside of Black Ops Cold War. Basically, this was going to be Blackout 2, a secondary Battle Royale map, and there was even, I guess, rumors about it getting ported over to Warzone, but I guess due to the success of Warzone and the dance, it ended up getting cancelled, and we just saw sections of the Ural Mountains inside of Fireteam, and of course, Outbreak in zombies. And ever since that happened, people have been begging this map to actually release because it's the Blackout 2 we never unfortunately received. However, it's coming over to Call of Duty Mobile. Now, it doesn't seem to be the exact version, but there are pieces of it put together. It has been changed, like I say, it's not the exact same cancelled map, but it's got a lot of the familiar points of interest, such as Sanatorium, as well as the Zoo. Interesting enough, Zoo never even released to Fireteam in multiplayer. It was a Zombies exclusive map. They even said they specifically built this POI for Zombies in mind, but now it's actually coming to the Battle Royale version, and it's crazy that this is releasing to COD Mobile and not to the actual Call of Duty game it was initially made for and not released by Treyarch, which were building this map. It sucks they put all of that time and effort into it, but I'm glad that it's coming in some way, shape, or form, because they should definitely get use out of any content that is scrapped in other ways, find ways to repurpose it, and this is the perfect way for it, and I would imagine that Avalon probably has some familiar points of interest to ones that were initially planned for this cancelled Euro Mountains map in a similar way to Verdansk 84 had some similar points of interest such as Duga, etc. And I think the Call of Duty Mobile developers are just big Treyarch fans because it really seems like a Treyarch focused game, the vibrant colours and everything like that. Gameplay wise it seems most similar to probably Black Ops 2 even. In complete contrast to Warzone Mobile that's completely fallen flat on its face where they obviously took inspiration from Modern Warfare and that game's just been so unpopular they've been slashing all of the developers for it because it completely underperformed, and there was even talks a while back about COD Mobile potentially discontinuing instead of Warzone Mobile, and then they reassured that it won't be getting shut down, but I guess due to Warzone Mobile's massive flop, they are now prioritizing the original Call of Duty Mobile instead, and it honestly wouldn't surprise me if Warzone Mobile eventually shuts down and they just go back to updating COD Mobile just as it is, because that's a collaboration between Activision and Tencent, because of that they wanted full revenue, which is why they started developing Warzone Mobile that wasn't a collaboration, so they could try and get, you know, maximum profits, but people prefer Call of Duty Mobile because it's a much better game, a much better optimized game. It maybe doesn't have the same graphical fidelity, but it's just a better looking visually game vibrancy wise, and it's just way better optimized for all different phone and device types, whereas Warzone Mobile's a mess. Most devices just cannot handle it. So that was a very big tangent there, but before getting into the Black Ops 6 information specifically, I just have a very awesome game to share with you, and then we'll jump right into the Black Ops 6 information. Stay tuned. Are you looking for an action-packed multiplayer adventure that's completely free? Well, you are in luck. My Pet Hooligan is available now in early access on the Epic Games Store, and there's literally no reason not to try it out considering it's free. You might as well give it a shot. Let's dive into this chaotic world and see what the hype's all about. In My Pet Hooligan, you'll jump into a fast-paced third-person shooter action game. It's a wild experience where you skateboarding rabbits battle each other, cause mayhem, and even just hang out with friends in the Hooliland city. Built by Amgy 
Studios, this game brings ex-Pixar veterans on board, and you can totally see it. The art style has that Pixar-like vibe with vibrant colours and smooth animations. Relive your childhood. But what's cooler, my pet hooligan has teamed up with Nvidia, pushing innovation to the next level. Using a special iPhone app, you can actually control your character's facial expressions while playing. So cool, dynamic, and innovative. It's all about making sure your gameplay feels fresh and unique. Whether you are fighting other hooligans in battle zones or simply cruising through the city, it's loaded with tons of creative fun. So what can you do in My Pet Hooligan? You've got lots of freedom. Want to fight? Jump into intense PvP battles, blow stuff up with wacky cartoony weapons and rack up points by eliminating enemies. But maybe you are more about creating chaos. Destroy cars, benches, whatever you want or tag the city with graffiti. You are not limited to just combat though. Skateboard through the city, chain tricks together, build up combos and boost your speed for even more insane action. Or explore every corner of the Hula Land, discovering hidden secrets, loot and coins to take your game to the next level. And hey, don't miss out on the big stuff happening this month. This month, my pal Hooligan has started bringing huge tournaments and tons of updates leading up to the eventual full launch planned in 2025. The game has been building its community for two years and it's dedicated to rewarding top players and contributors, but you are still early, so now's the perfect time to join in. Getting on all of the action, what are you waiting for? Download My Pet Hooligan for free on the Epic Games Store and rebel against MetaZuckBot in the most chaotic, fun way possible. Links are in the description and I shall see you in game and I want to give a big thank you to AMG Studios for kindly sponsoring this video so that I can showcase it with you. I hope you enjoy. So as you know, the other day they released the launch trailer for Black Ops 6. And this is a very cool trailer. Now, people have already done their breakdowns of it, so I'm kind of late to it. So I'm just going to go over the key things from this trailer, of course, as a Zombies fan as well. The Cold War is over. My guess is that they're planning a spectacle of some kind. Something that'll scare the hell out of people. Coalition forces launched the operation two weeks ago against Saddam Hussein. They're taking out as many strategic targets from the air as possible. Do it. Station weapon free. Some biological weapon. And they put this in Saddam's hands too. Isn't that your friend? Turn it off! The nature of our enemy is unclear now. They would kill each one of you given the open shot. Time we had a check. We see Livingstone, who is, of course, the director of the CIA, who is trying to track down Pantheon. Pantheon are this elite, mysterious group that have infiltrated the CIA, even to the highest echelon in government and the highest power positions. And they have potentially framed Adler as being a traitor. And it really wouldn't surprise me if Livingstone himself ends up being the bad person and actually working for Pantheon, explaining why they've been able to make their way so high up in government. We then see another shot of the Washington, D.C. mission that we got a preview of before during one of Bill Clinton's rally events. And of course, there is this Pantheon juggernaut that literally comes out that's going to be crazy. But the reason why I brought up the juggernaut is because there is another shot where it seems we actually see a zombie version of this juggernaut. Now, I guess technically it's not confirmed it's a zombie because we just see the glowing yellow eyes and it's very dark. However, this seems to be a zombie version of this Pantheon juggernaut. There's many ways this could be interpreted. For one, it could literally just be a real zombie. I mean, zombie is literally canon to this story, so there's no reason actual zombies cannot be here in the campaign. However, I think the more likely option is that this is some kind of hallucination or delusion, considering, of course, the campaign's going to be all about the truth lies and brainwashing and trippy stuff that we've come to expect in Black Ops campaigns. And we have seen zombies, of course, in the Black Ops campaigns before, such as in Black Ops 3's In the Demon Within mission, where Corvus was messing with Sarah's mind, if I believe. This was not real. It was just some weird, distorted reality in the AI that we were seeing. And then in Black Ops Cold War, we saw the zombies underground in a hole, which was again a hallucination from Bell, as this whole mission was like a warped reality with the red doors, which was so cool. So I'm guessing that'll be similar in this campaign where it might be Adler or whoever and the effects of his brainwashing by Perseus in the past. We do see some other shots as well, where we see Saddam's statue fall. A lot of the shots are mostly just stuff we've already seen. We see the bank vault in the casino mission, 
mission. But then the next crazy thing is that we actually see the weapon of mass destruction that we previously heard about kept in some sort of underground vault. And it's this giant Sophia held up with these wires. And how crazy does this look? Now, previously they described that Pantheon plan on detonating weapons of mass destruction across the globe. But we didn't know what these weapons were. Were they nukes or anything like that? Now, I don't know what this weapon actually is. If anyone is a weapons manufacturer or knows of weapons manufacturer stuff or military related stuff, like, do you know what this is? Is this a real life thing or is this just a made up concept or maybe something based on something existing in real life but it might be fiction? I'm not exactly sure. But this seems to be the weapon of mass destruction. We don't know what it does. It does seem to have some black smoke emitting from the bottom of it. I wonder if, like, it has something to do with Nova gas that emits or maybe it has something to do with zombies because it looks strikingly similar to the underground chamber underneath Richthofen's mansion in Liberty Falls where he has the containment chamber which looks so similar. Of course it's not the same but it's like this Sophia device with these hexagon chambers on its side held up with wires. Like the parallels are so so similar so I wonder if like I say I assume the zombies elements in the campaign are just going to be hallucinations and not real but at the same time there could actually be zombies elements implemented in this campaign. Maybe even this technology has something to do with the zombies technology as well because at the end of the day the plots that we have going on right now in zombies and the campaign are very similar. Richthofen's Project Janus have infiltrated the highest levels of government including himself and that's very similar to what Pantheon have done infiltrating the government so surely if they're both within the government in the higher upper echelon Pantheon and Janus are going to cross heads they know of each other they're interacting with each other so surely there is room for crossover there so I wonder if you know maybe Maybe they've even used zombies and ethereum related technology to actually make whatever this weapon of mass destruction is or maybe it has something to do with nova like i say now we then see some other hallucinations where we see saddam hussein's palace but it's all warped and distorted and then we see of course this uh, zombie juggernaut now speaking of this juggernaut it looks very very similar to the zombie boss that we had in vanguard the sturm krieger which was kind of similar to goliath from exo zombies as well it had a big machine gun turret so i wonder if it's basically just like a reskin version of that zombie boss and they're going to be using it in the campaign. No, like I say, it could be a distortion or this could be an actual real zombie. Only time will tell, but considering they built it for the campaign, I wonder if we're going to see this in the zombies mode itself as well. It wouldn't surprise me. You know, maybe it's not a Pantheon juggernaut, but this same version of the AI could be a Janus version instead. Now, we then see right after this shot, someone banging on the glass as they're watching the surveillance footage. So I'm guessing this is footage of, you know, the test to build this weapon of mass destruction or maybe even after one of these weapons has gone off, but I'm guessing it is from a test here. And like I say, I have a feeling either it's got something to do with Ethereum, Nova Gas, I doubt it's something entirely brand new technology that we've never seen before. It's probably going to build on what we've already seen. Then we see a, a few new shots of Adler and stuff like that, and this seems to be heading into some sort of trippy mission. I guess they are questioning if Adler is the mole or not, and they actually grab him and take a hold of him. And then we see the truth lies, and then things start to get trippy. We see Woods, in his wheelchair and in the background of the initial shot we see a sunset and then we see all of this orange light in the background and then we see a character falling as there is this giant orange reddish portal in the sky this looks like something very much out of zombies and this is going to be one of these weird hallucination trippy missions but I wonder who this is is it Kingston is it actually Woods himself the reason why I say it could be Woods himself we see one wheel floating on the left one wheel on the right so it could be his wheelchair like broken up in this weird distorted reality and we see what's probably the safe house in the distance floating on an island very much zombies-esque like revelations are in the dark ether and then he seems to be falling down to a vehicle it's kind of hard to make out there seems to be like an oil canister and there seems to be some land as well but yeah there's lots of weird stuff uh, floating around there and then we see Woods with a shotgun so it seems like we're going to be getting at least one mission where we're going to be playing as Woods himself despite him being as in a wheelchair it seems like there's going to be a mission where the safe house house is being infiltrated either by Pantheon or the CIA if they suspect Adler is a mole. Maybe they're siding with Adler and they're defending against him. But I wouldn't be surprised as well if this entire mission is a hallucination in the safe house. You know, it could start off with him defending it and then the whole world starts bleeding and then he ends up falling apart out of the sky, out of the area. And this is all some sort of weird distortion. Maybe even that's where the juggernaut zombie type shows up. Then we see another shot where we see a tank and then it seems to be firing at a plane. Now I've seen lots of people saying that this could actually be Verdansky's airport and the runway and it very well could be it's kind of hard to make out from this shot and the airports of course all look very similar so I can't tell exactly but that is a possibility then we see more shots from the D 
NPC mission, then we see some shots of the casino heist mission, and then we see Adler about to throw someone into a helicopter propeller, and then it cuts to the end. Very crazy trailer, but they're the important things. Of course, I've missed some things. I just went over the key details. Let me know if I've missed anything in particular, but yeah, lots of zombies tie-ins. Now, the next thing that has actually been shown is we've gotten a full recap of the Black Ops story leading up to Black Ops 6's campaign. So, the recaps basically from Black Ops showing the canon Black Ops 2 events in the late 90s. They show the story spanning all the way from the 60s, the 40s, up to where we are in 1991 with Black Ops 6. Now, for the most part, we already knew all of these events were canon because they've been saying them so many times repeatedly within the marketing. We don't know about Black Ops 2, though, if they're going to change any events of Black Ops 2 leading forward, apart from these flashback missions that they've said are canon. I'm going to play the full recap for you now, and then I'm going to talk about the couple particular interesting points in this recap regarding the potential of Mason potentially being alive, for example. So enjoy, and then I'll be back in a second. The covert world of Black Ops began in 1961, when CIA operatives Frank Woods, Alex Mason, and Jason Hudson set off on a decade-long journey through the darkest corners of the world. That journey culminated in 1968, when they stopped the plot to activate deadly sleeper agents embedded inside the United States. Thirteen years later, at the height of the Cold War, Mason, Woods, and Hudson joined fellow operative Russell Adler. Together, they hunted down the Soviet spy Perseus, leader of a rogue organization intent on dismantling the West. In 1981, Adler's team prevented Perseus from detonating dozens of neutron bombs placed across Europe. Flash forward to 1986, Mason, Woods, and Hudson learned that South American cartel boss Raul Menendez had moles within the CIA. They tracked the drug lord to Nicaragua, where Woods, after a fierce battle with Menendez, presumed him killed in action. Three years later, in 1989, a CIA operation in Panama ended tragically when Woods was tricked into shooting and killing his best friend, Alex Mason. Raul Menendez, back from the dead, captured Woods and revealed himself as the mastermind behind the Panama plot. He then killed Hudson and shot Woods, leaving him maimed but alive so that Woods might suffer as Menendez had suffered. Now, every sacrifice, every secret, every conspiracy has led them to the year 1991. In a time when the enemy has eyes everywhere, how do you know who to trust? Now, Call of Duty have also posted a full blog recapping the events, going more in-depth than this trailer, which I will have linked below if you want to read through it after you are done watching this video. It seems everything has been leading to this moment in the actual trailer, they say, leading to the series' most significant events that are leading into Black Ops 6. Now, they don't recap World at War, even though it obviously is still canon and everything like that, because they were just doing the key events leading to Black Ops 6 that tie into Black Ops 6 specifically, and what you need to know to understand this story. You don't really need to know about the Reznov stuff in World of War, probably. Okay, so yeah, like I say, for the most part, you should already know this, and it doesn't have any interesting revelations within this, but it recaps pretty much everything that happened in a very neat way. Everything with Kravchenko and Menendez, all still canon, of course, and they recap the Black Ops Cold War events too. However, when we move over to Hudson's death, Hudson, they say, is still dead. Alex Mason, they say, is still dead, because they're going with what is claimed to be the canon choice in Black Ops 2's campaign, where Woods was, of course, tricked into shooting and killing his best friend, Alex Mason, because Menendez had moles inside the CIA. He even has people in the CIA. Mason! We don't know who that mole is, it's been speculated, it's been Hudson for years, and maybe they were planning on it being Hudson, we don't know if it actually was or is Hudson, it's still a mystery to this day, but whoever it is, they seem to be expanding on this old plot thread in its entirety in Black Ops 6's campaign, and we're going to be truly finding out probably in this game who the mole was, or if there are in fact many, so Hudson I guess could still be, although he's already dead it seems, but I guess there could be more moles such as Adler and his brainwashing, he could have still been up to stuff, and we're going to be questioning the 
truth lies throughout the entire campaign trying to figure out the truth but i'm guessing the lines are going to be blurred there's probably not really going to be a specific truth per se it's going to be up to our interpretation i think adler was specifically framed as a mole after this disaster in panama where frank woods was maimed adler fled without a trace and i guess we're going to learn if he is a mole or not obviously he's a very morally great character as they all are so i wouldn't be surprised if his character lies somewhere in the middle he's not fully clean obviously but he's probably being framed for some things at the same time or maybe it has something to do with his brainwashing from perseus if he has done anything particular wrong that we learn about in the gap now of course this game's not going to have multiple choices it seems so things should be a bit more straightforward than we've seen at least with black ops 2 and cold war however when they show the scene of mason where he gets shot by woods they seem to show the choice where mason is shot in the leg and you can see he doesn't have a bullet wound in his actual head whereas he was shot literally in the head in this choice that they are supposedly making as the cannon choice which then of course led to Woods getting shot in the kneecap by Menendez after this event we saw in Black Ops 2's flashback. Menendez! So could it be that Alex Mason is actually still alive or was this just a mistake? Because in the recap of Black Ops 2 they did show various different shots from Cold War that weren't exactly relevant. They were just sort of using I guess as b-roll and the person editing this was probably just sent you know a, a big folder with a load of different footage and it could be this is just the footage they had and they used the wrong clip where he should have been getting shot in the head. But at the same time surely so many different people have probably seen this and reviewed it before publishing so if they used the wrong clip surely someone would have pointed it out somewhere along the way. So could it be that Alex Mason could actually be still alive? I think this is very unlikely. They've made very adamant throughout all of the marketing that Mason and Hudson are definitely still dead and this is the canon choice but the whole game's about the truth lies so it could be they want us to think Mason is dead and that's why they've been saying it so many times in the marketing but then we're gonna find out he's actually been secretly alive the whole time maybe he was actually shot in the foot and what we saw before with Woods maybe it was some sort of distortion in his mind and was not the full truth and we're gonna play with that event here and he's gonna be revealed to actually somehow still be alive and in a wheelchair I guess like we saw he was the one in the box the whole time like we saw in Black Ops 4 something weird could happen like that there are so many different angles with the black ops campaign with all of the trippy stuff that they can go and because hallucinations and stuff like that are a big part of the black ops campaigns they can really technically do anything now personally i don't think mason is still going to be alive i feel like this is a mistake but i guess there is a possibility but i do think menendez will somehow be a big part of this campaign in some way of course with the mole connection and maybe that could be expanded upon to then see a black ops 2 sequel next year following the aftermath of the stuff with menendez in black ops 2 now of course his voice actor unfortunately died but this game's been in development for a long time so if he does have a cameo somewhere in this campaign or even the next one it could have potentially been recorded before i'm not exactly sure so yeah that's been everything we've learned about black Ops 6's campaign lots more content coming on the channel i'm really excited for everything anyways thank you for watching the video make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest call of duty news and information so anyways thank you for watching and uh bye